proxyware using honey gain. Is it worth the gain? So it seems like some people, George, are willing to share a bit of their home network connection with others uh, for a fee. It seems like it's actually a little bit sketchy, though. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this was kind of news to me, uh, which I'm embarrassed to say, but I'll say it because I didn't even know this was really a thing. I've heard the word proxyware a few times, but this is not what I thought it involved. You know, it took my mind somewhere else. So apparently you can sign up for uh, a proxyware service from several companies like Honeygain is one, there's JP Royal, NanoWire, there's a bunch of them. Um, and you essentially selling, you, you install a client on your machine um, and whatever, and I'm not sure how exactly they're doing this, but they're selling off a portion of your bandwidth. So if you have a, a certain amount of bandwidth you're restricted to, they're going to occupy I'm not sure what percentage of it, maybe it allows you to choose it, but they're going to take up some of your bandwidth and allocate it to somebody else um, who's willing to pay for more bandwidth and they'll pay you in return. So you're renting, you're essentially renting your bandwidth, right? Um, and for somebody who doesn't use their internet connection that often, and if they have like, you know, a gigabit of speed that a gigabit down that they can sacrifice half of that or however much, I guess it might be worth it. Um, I'm not sure how much money you're going to make. Every one of these companies, they give out a certain, a, a different amount, but nevertheless, this is a thing. People are like, oh, this is a passive way for me to earn income. You know, when I'm not home, I'll just rent out my connection. So other users through, and so what happens is, um, you know, the, the, the host will download the agent. So I'll download it to my machine. My machine will make a connection to the hosting company. So let's say Huntingate in this case. I create an account. Honeygain has a, has this pool of, of of bandwidth. They then rent it out to another person who's willing to use it, or maybe they have a contract with some other company. And depending on the meter, the amount that they're using, they'll pay me a certain amount, right? Um, so all the and in this case, what happens is all the traffic that that's generated from that portion that I sell. Um, is going to appear to be coming from my IP address. Um, and this is kind of where things get a little sketchy. And you can see how people would want to take advantage of this, right? Because you're essentially becoming a proxy for anybody who's willing to pay for it or who's willing to just, you know, hijack your machine. So what's happening here is um, Talos wrote up, uh, Cisco wrote up a good article on this from their Talos team. They're starting to see that um, a lot of Trojans are being created, right? Uh, based on these proxyware agents. So you, you, the file that you would normally download, um, they're replacing that file with a kind of like an updated version. And they're also putting in like malware installers um, and a few different URL, uh, a few different scripts containing some URLs for C2 connection. And for what I found to be the most interesting part of this, um, is this one specific uh, group um, when they created their package that they were giving to people who thought they were signing up for proxyware essentially what they were doing is setting up a connection with the malicious group and they were proxying their malware through their network coming out of their router looking like their traffic and doing whatever point mining um you know whatever whatever kind of nefarious uh things related to network traffic they want. So in this case, the, the malware was being installed. The user was, was, was seeing the same install process from Honeygain, like, okay, here's your account created. Um, you know, you have a connection now on our server. Malware is being dropped on the side silently, right? So there was a coin miner being installed. At the same time, there was a, a script that was being launched that had the URL to Honeygain to a legit account that was created by the malicious actors with their referral code. Mm -hmm. So they're actually getting money for every time somebody signs up using their referral code. <laughs> and so for every person that they scam into downloading this application, they're like, they're making money off of referrals, right? And in this case, they have so many people sign up 
that when they intercepted, when the researchers intercepted the traffic, they saw that that referral code was being blocked because they had too many people who had registered using that code. So <laughs> they've already maxed out the amount of referrals and the amount of accounts that could be created on that code. Um, so it's good that that was maxed out, that there was a max to that. Yeah, right, which they didn't know about. Apparently, I guess they didn't know. I guess this, because this is very new. This was the only instance of using that string that they had seen, that URL string. Um, I'm sure they're going to find ways around this now. I'm sure Honeygain may put some checks in place. Who knows? Um, but the, the scary part of this whole thing, I mean, we all know about coin mining. Um, you know, it's the low-hanging fruit of malware now. They're just dumping it on every machine they can get a, hand, a hold of. Um, but I think that the, the scary part and what the article kind of really stresses is since everybody's working from home now, people are connecting to a VPN, they're, they're doing this on company machines. And what's happening is all of this traffic that's being generated by this honey gain or these proxy wares are looking like they're coming from corporate IP addresses. Yeah. So it's making it harder for whoever's the victim from that specific, forget about the victim who downloaded the client, forget about them, you know, wherever that traffic is being redirected to or whatever, um, you know, whatever botnets they're trying to create, whatever, coin mining, whatever C2 traffic is coming out of that machine, it's looking like it's coming from a corporate network. So whoever's the victim of that side of it is having a hard time figuring out why is this company, you know, bombing us with, um, you know, a scanning attacks from the outside. Like, why is it coming from, let's just say, you know, ABC company who we know it would never do this intentionally, but it's coming from an IP in that range um, so this is a huge problem, right? And this is what, so what the Cisco Talos team is like, is it, it, saying in this article, that's one of their biggest fears is, is the malicious users and the malicious actors who are creating the, the malware. This is the kind of people they're, they're targeting. They're looking for people to install this on company machines. It's already working on, on you know, users who are putting it on their personal machines. Um, and, and, for some users, they're actually trojanizing this software. So a user is trying to go download some other random file, right? Or maybe gets an email, clicks on a link. Before you know it, they're getting proxyware, you know, a legit honey game software log logged into their machine. They have no idea their bandwidth is being farmed out by somebody else. You know, they may start to see their traffic slowing down, their download speeds to, to significantly drop. And they have no idea why this is happening, right? Unless they start looking into their task manager and, you know, doing some packet captures and say, hey, why am I sending traffic to this, you know, to this cloud instance? And then it's going somewhere else. Like, uh, so mm -hmm. there are a lot of ways to take advantage of this product and of this business model. Um, and it, you know, it, it seems like um, it's a tremendously long article, very well written. They go deep into the malware. Um, we don't have, I mean, we all know how pretty much the majority of this malware works. Um, in this case, they're, they're just being very specific with, there's a, uh, it drops and executes a miner, right? An XMR miner. It drops and executes that URL, which gives the malicious actor his request, you know, his referral credits. Um, and it drops and executes the legit version of Honeygain or the malicious version, depending on who they're targeting. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's mu much that we can do right now. Um, it looks like the, the, the mitigation, um, suggestions by Cisco ultimately start, it looks like you need to have your malware protections in place. Just make sure you're blocking malicious IPs, malicious domains, um, you know, and yeah, so, so it's kind of a new thing. Um, and they also have an update mechanism for machines that they gain persistence on, right? So that agent's going to continuously update and change the C2. And, you know, we all know how that works. Um, but yeah, so it's a very interesting concept, something that uh, it's, it's actually pretty fascinating what people are willing to do for a little bit of extra money. <laughs> yeah, I'm just so shocked that it uh, somebody abused it. Really? <laughs> are, you, are you really? Oh, uh, okay. It's not at all. The concept alone just sounds kind of strange. Just the idea of installing something on my personal machine that then allows my bandwidth to be used by others. 
it's weird. It's just kind of a weird concept to me. Maybe it's weird because, you know, we're security conscious people, but um, yeah, it essentially turns your machine into a proxy. And yeah. I, I have to imagine a number of companies getting tips from other security companies saying like, hey, we're noticing, you know, a decent number of your IPs hitting coin mining sites. Like, I think you, I think you guys got coin miners on your systems and then them going through and trying to figure out where the heck this coin miner is and mm -hmm. they're not going to find it, you know? Um, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you were doing an incident response on this box and you did, you had no idea what honey gain was, you might still be able to identify that as the quote unquote source of the traffic, though, right? True, true. If you were the doing, is still leaving, right? If you were able right. to incident response, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think the concern here too was was if they were using your like this bot, like my laptop, right, connected to the VPN. To do to perform like a DOS on some internet-facing right. site, right? From another company, those researchers will see the traffic appearing from not from George's laptop, but from my VPN connection IP, and they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why is this yeah. coming from you know AT and T or whatever? Like, this is crazy, you know? Like, what's going on?" <laughs> yeah, and then then it's on then it's on AT and T to prove that they hadn't right. the source of the traffic. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that being a real problem. All right. So, what can people do at this point? Is just they they did share some uh, indicators, but you know, indicators get stale. So, yeah. what's the thing to do? Just keep an eye out so, for this kind of traffic, this kind of software. Yeah, I guess so. The indicators are you know the the, the what do you call it? SHA two fifty six um, hashes of of the malware that's being used. But like you said, Matt, it's, that stuff changes constantly, right? So, I think what Cisco recommended towards the end of the article, which kind of made me a little sad, is essentially just you, you have to have your fundamentals, um, your secure, security fundamentals, right? So your endpoint has to be secure from to protect from the execution of malware, right? Okay, that's very generic. That's very like, that's very general. Um, have a web appliance to scan for, um, to look for uh, scanning for malicious websites. Um, so ultimately, their recommendations, uh, securing your firewall to make sure that if you see a certain amount of traffic or activity, um, that they consider this a threat. Nothing very specific to, to the issue, but just in general, like um, make sure you can, you can you know, prevent the execution of malware, make sure certain domains... They did say, you know, of course, make sure that you are, your company organization is blocking every domain associated with all proxyware sites, um, because, you know, there are times where where the machine is going to perform API calls to Honey Game to whatever one you chose. So if you're preventing that traffic from going out, you know, that essentially will bring down that connection. Um, as long so they, as you know what the the endpoint is that they're connecting to, or you have a signature for what that honey gain traffic looks like, right? Yeah, well, and the only thing they're giving are domains. They're essentially giving, um, if I'm looking at it right now, they're just giving you a, a few domains, uh, and they give you some of the domains associated with the malicious campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're also saying, you know, of course, Dropbox is, is, is involved with just serving some of the malware. Um, but they do show some domains um, that, that you could put in there. And they also say, you know, just make sure your, your organization is blocking access, whether you're blocking it at the application level, the client level, or the, the web traffic level, um, the domains, the IP addresses associated with these companies. Um, yeah, there are some snort rules here in this article as well. So I haven't inspected so that helps, yeah. They may actually be better than just um, blocking by domain or detecting by domain. So. Hopefully that's what they do. Cool. Yeah. Good observation. Yeah. I guess I missed that. But cool. Yeah. Then that's better. Right. Um, and we hope that, I don't know what they can do, but we hope that these companies, these proxyware companies also have something, you know, uh, in the pipeline to help prevent this kind of use yeah. or misuse. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would also imagine too, that um, there's gotta be some policies against installing software like that on a work machine. <laughs> I mean, you would hope. Yeah. It's a work yeah. machine. It's not intended to make you money, you know, so uh, obviously there's enforcement issues there. But a question I had, I guess, is there's legitimate software and then there's the illegitimate software that's served elsewhere, like on Dropbox and other, you know, locations where you can download illegitimate things. Am I correct in that? Yep. So I guess 
another bit of advice for people is kind of the same, you know, don't download cracked versions of software, you know, don't torrent things and install those on your machine, you know, get them from a reputable source. In this case, you know, let's say, let's say that your company is all for it, you know, hey, for sure, if you can make some money and you got fast internet at home, go for it. And make sure you're going to the actual legitimate website and downloading the real software and not right. running it on, you know, not malware.com. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing here is all of these all of these uh, malicious actors are all taking advantage of the fact that a lot of people are still working remote. A lot of companies are kind of easing up on their security because if a user's remote and you're trying to troubleshoot something, and if it's just easier for the IT person just to allow you to download this software from an external site, they'll just open up policy on your machine. And that, that's where it gets tricky. And, and I think they're taking advantage of that. They know that so a lot of companies are opening up a little more just to kind of make it easier for them to to manage um without thinking of of this so it's a interesting time now with this kind of software <laughs> <laughs>